After a two-hour preliminary hearing, snake handling pastor Andrew Hamblin had his case bound over to the grand jury. Hamblin, who is pastor of the Tabernacle Church of God in La Follette, appeared in court yesterday afternoon where Judge Joe Ayers heard testimony to determine if there was sufficient evidence to send the case to the grand jury. Hamblin is charged with possession of Class I wildlife. Once again, church members and other supporters flooded the courtroom in red clothes to show support for Hamblin. During his court appearance, both the state and defense heard testimony from the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, known as TWRA. Sergeant Joe Durnham, who cited Hamblin on November 7th for possession of 53 snakes, who has worked for TWRA for 31 years, answered questions directed at him by District Attorney Lori Phillips and Hamblin's lawyer, Mike Hatmaker, for about 90 minutes. Hatmaker asked him to go over what happened the day he seized the snakes from Hamblin's church. I went over to the residence of Andrew Hamblin and asked him about his possession of his Class I reptiles. Deren then went on to say he asked Hamblin if he was still involved with snakes. He said Hamblin told him yes. I asked if he could show us those snakes that he possessed and he agreed to let us follow him down to the church. He also reported Hamblin unlocked the church and another room where the snakes were held at which point he discovered 53 snakes. He then cited him and seized the snakes. Hatmaker asked if Dernan had in fact asked Hamblin if he was in possession of the snakes or if he used another word. He said he could not remember verbatim but revealed that he had recorded the entire encounter with Hamblin and the recording could be played. The court took a brief recess while a laptop computer was set up and connected with speakers so the recording could be played. Hadmaker questioned why Duran went over to Hamlin's residence asking if the TWRA had prior evidence. Duran said he had met Hamlin in the spring while he was working on another case involving snakes in Knox County. He made me aware that he had snakes then. Andrew asked me, when you come to my church, are you going to come in to get the snakes during the church service? Duran said, adding that the reason he finally went to Hamlin's home was because his captain sent him. Hatmaker asked why there had been such a long time lapse between the time that Hamblin allegedly made Duran aware that he had snakes and the November 7th seizure date. I went when I was told to go, he replied. After listening to the recording, the defense asked Duran why he had recorded Hamblin without his knowledge. He replied that he thought it was obvious he was recording because of the size of the audio and video recorder that he was wearing on his shirt. Dernan went on to describe the audio and video recorder for Phillips. Hamblin said after court was over that he had no knowledge that he was being recorded. Had to make a rask if Duran, if he had any, other evidence other than Hamblin's own admission that he had snakes. Well, I asked him if he still had snakes, and he said yes. He took us to them, and he was the only one with keys to unlock the doors at the church to get them. Dernan said, Hatmaker then made a motion 
to have the case dismissed, saying that the state had failed to show evidence that Hamblin was the one in possession of the snakes other than his own admission. The law in this state says in order to be convicted of a crime, the state must show evidence other than his own confession, Hatmaker said. The district attorney argued the point, saying, as far as possession goes, the defendant was the only one with keys to the room the snakes were locked in. That was the words from Phillips, who said, you all have a difference of opinion, Judge Ayers said. He added that he overruled the motion and the case would be bound over to the grand jury, which convenes on January the 6th at 9 a.m. If found guilty, Hamblin could face up to 11 months and 29 days behind bars, as well as a $2,500 fine. Here is what Hamblin had to say on the hearing. Two pages, two pages of records. That's how many records the 2013 Campbell High Cougars district champion football team set or broke. WLAF's Josh Parker says some records were even broken several times over the course of the Cougars 10 and 2 year. Coach Justin Price, Coach Matt Price and their team were honored at the halftime of the Campbell Clinton basketball game Tuesday night at John Brown Gym. It was a split with Clinton for the basketball Cougars in last night's varsity games. The Lady Cougars dominated Clinton 67 to 41 in route to their sixth straight victory as Campbell County improves to 6 and 4. The Cougars lost for the eighth time through 12 games as the Lady Cougars play Unico County on December 26 in a 3 p.m. game at Fulton while the Cougars play the same day at 8.15 p.m. against Maryville at Maryville. WLAF has all the coverage. No contact was made, but damage was done, causing injuries last night. According to Jacksboro Police Detective Mike Starrett, a car crossed into the lane of Sean Joseph Lane, who was riding a motorcycle. Starrett says around 9.30 p.m., Laney swerved to avoid being hit by the car and was forced to lay his bike down. As a result, Laney suffered head, back, and chest injuries and was flown by Lifestar to the UT Medical Center in Locksville. The 37-year-old man from Bradley County, who works for CSX Railroad, was listed in critical condition at an earlier hour today as he recovers in the UTMC trauma unit. The accident happened in the LaFollette bound lanes in front of the Jacksboro Middle School. And that's a look at our news today. We'll return in a minute with the Campbell County Sheriff's Department report. Three people were booked into the Campbell County Jail in the past 24 hours. Michael Ryan Bruce, age 35, of Justice Lane in La Follette for violation of probation. 42-year-old Jeffrey Scott Hampton of Merchants Drive in Knoxville for driving while suspended, violation of the Tennessee financial law, and speeding. And last today, Luther Martin Ward, 43, of Hatmaker Ridge Road in Jacksboro, on an attachment for child support. And that's a look at the news. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming your way. And join us back here again. We'll meet you right here along about 5.30 tomorrow evening. Hey, Big Josh with you once again on this Wednesday evening looking at our birthdays and anniversaries. Our birthday and anniversary club is brought to you by your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. They're located in the Food Lion Center. And listen, stop by, pay them a visit, will you, and check out that great food they have up there. Our birthdays today, Mr. Mark Honecker celebrating. Happy birthday to you, Mark. 
and Cassie Meadows is celebrating today. Happy birthday to you, Cassie. Dolores Carroll is having a birthday today. Happy birthday to Dolores. And James J. Bird Campbell is celebrating. Happy birthday to you, J. Bird. And Destiny Camberlin is 11 years old. Happy birthday to you, Destiny. And yesterday, Jaden Peebley celebrated. Happy belated birthday to you, Jaden. We hope everybody is having a great day and had a great day. Now, if you're celebrating your birthday or anniversary, we would love to uh, tell you that we want you to have a good day, but we'd love to have your name on our list here because that's the way you become eligible to be in the drawing, and you could win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two. My friends here at WLAF and East Side Pizza and Belly. Hey, good Lord willing, see you tomorrow about this time. Good night.